Hello there, this is Cool Dude Clem, and if you remember in a previous video, I found this grotty old Dell PC in a skip. So today, what we're gonna do, I don't know why I say we, I mean, there's only one of me here. But anyway, like I was saying, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna power this on and see if it even works. And also, we're gonna do a speed comparison test between this and old Franken PC over here which, as some of you may know, is a computer that I made out of wood, and we're going to see which one is faster. So first, we're going to give old Franken PC a task. I'm going to make it convert a video. Then I'm going to power this thing on, see if it works, and see if this takes any longer or shorter to do the same thing. Okay, well, here is old Franken PC looking kind of sorry for itself, actually, but before anybody says anything, yes, I know the mouse is on the left hand, but I am not a lefty. I'm ambidextrous. Okay, so here is Franken PC's basic specifications. Hopefully, you can see it. I'm pretty sure you can't, so what I'm going to go and do. I'm just going to take a screen cap and then splice it into the video. So now you can see the specifications of old Franken PC has a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 GHz with 768 megabytes of RAM. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a task and then I'm going to try the exact same thing on that other computer that I found and see which one does it faster. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert a video with virtual dub. Apparently this is the first time I've run it. I copied this over from one of my other computers. But should still have all the plugins and everything that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... We're going to convert this file right here. I'm going to stick that in there. Gonna select. Uh, where is it now? Oh, I've never seen that before. But anyway, we're gonna select XFID MPEG co for codec. Not gonna change anything else. Just gonna give it the job. We're gonna save this and see how long it takes. That's what I'm going to call it. See how long it takes. And we'll come back to it when it's done and see how long it's taken. Okay, that's almost done now. And so far it has taken 4 minutes and 40 seconds. My i5 would have done this about 5 times by now, but anyway. Can't expect too much of this. Okay, so that was just 4 minutes 57. And you know something? I have absolutely no idea where it's put the file. Absolutely no idea whatsoever. Okay, let's put it in my documents. Let's just see how well that turned out. Here's the file. Newly converted file. I'm sure you recognize this from one of my YouTube videos. Okay. Decided to move this closer to things. Just got to put this little shield back on. On there, connect these two grounds, then put it all back together. Okay, so I'm going to test this computer I found now, and I've commandeered a lot of stuff from Franken PC in order to do this test. We've got the monitor. The keyboard and the mouse, which this time I'm going to be using with my right hand. Hope it understands the USB mouse. And I've even commented Franken PC's power supply just in case the original power supply is bad. And that might be the reason why it was thrown out. I do not want anything going bang in my face. So I'll put the microphone down. 
Okay, let's plug in. First of all, the monitor. Okay, monitor is on. Now let's plug in this thing and see if it even turns on. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's for some reason it's automatically turned on. I didn't press a button. Oh, we seem to have... It seems to have forgotten its BIOS settings. Well, that's not going to be much of a problem. I'll just change the battery. And I'm surprised this is actually powering up. I'm actually very surprised this is powering up, considering I didn't even press the button. Oh yes, this has definitely forgotten its settings. That battery will need to be replaced. But it lives to die another day. Um, as somebody said, I've forgotten who it was. I know somebody on YouTube says it lives to die another day. I think it was Davis Farm, actually. Alright, let's see if it works with the keyboard. Press it. One, okay, it's doing something. Let's see if it boots. Ah, oh, well, it's booting. I'm really surprised it's even got this far, actually. Of course, I don't know what wattage the power supply in this is. I mean, this one's a 250 watt supply. Should be plenty enough for this computer. <coughs> Let's see if we can get some specs from this, shall we? Yeah, 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 stop popping on it, I know. Oh, it's only now just detecting my mouse. So it obviously knows USB mice, but it's not moving. I'm moving the mouse and nothing is actually happening. So it hasn't quite installed it yet. I really don't know why this lime wire. I think someone's been pirating stuff. Alright, we've got a mouse. Now let's see if we can get some information on this thing. We have an Intel Celeron processor at 2.8 gigahertz, same clock speed as Franken PC, and one gigabyte of RAM. So, both of those RAM sticks are good, we know that. But is this faster than the Pentium 4? That's the test we're going to do right now. At this point, I have absolutely no idea. So anyway, we're just going to close this. But look at this. It doesn't even have the drivers. Look how choppy that is. Still, that's not going to affect the performance of the video encoding. Because it's not going to be using any graphics hardware to do that. I don't think Virtual Dub is that sophisticated. So, I will just go in. I will load up Virtual Dub from the thing here. I will set my video compression. Actually, I should have done this before, after I put the file in, but never mind. Okay, we want an XVID codec. Alright, let's bring in the file. If I can find it, of course, I did put it on this flash drive, so we should f should see it somewhere. That's why I couldn't see it. I don't recognize the Lycon. Anyway, let's just put that in. Okay, we've got the same warning that we did on Franken PC. Let me just maximize this, and we'll make sure we've still got the same compression selected. Yep, we're on XVID. So let's give this the job and let's see. I'll just call it testing and we'll see how long it takes. All right, we're almost through with the video compression. and I can already tell that this is faster than Franken PC because on Franken PC we were getting about 5.5 frames per second a video rendering rate, and here we're getting, well, over seven! We're blustering along here!
and I have really lost my train of thought. Anyway, we're almost done, and we are just about done. Any time now? 4 minutes 14 seconds, so this is definitely a faster computer, although not by much, than what we had with Franken PC. Well, this is inside Franken PC. And for those of you who are interested in what's inside this computer, I have done a couple of slight modifications to it since you last saw it. But anyway, we'll go over what we've actually got in here. Well, it's the hard drive. It's actually resting on a sponge, so it doesn't make any annoying vibrations. Anyway, we've got the main power supply here. And here is power supply for the audio amplifier, which I made out of two wall watt supplies. Those are both 5 volt supplies. I've connected them in series and used the bit where they're connected together as the ground. So I've got a positive 5 volt and a negative 5 volt. And that powers the audio amplifier here. Actually, maybe I should point to it with this hand so I'm not getting in the way. Just a simple class B amplifier. And the op amp amplifies it a little bit and compensates for the transistor's crossover distortion, so it sounds nice and good. And that goes out to the stereo speakers on either side of the computer, and I've even got went crazy and put in a little mono speaker as well, if I want to listen to it through that. Don't know why I did that, but still, I'm a bit crazy. And over here we've got the output and input jacks for video out and video in, because the graphic card on this does have composite video out which is a really nice feature. Got a level meter here for the audio, which doesn't work because I haven't really wired that up yet. Cooling fans here. There's the CPU, which is a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 um, gigahertz. Got TV capture card, video card. And the memory we've got in here, that one is a 256 at 333 MHz, and the one on the left is a 512 megabyte at 400. So I'm going to remove those and put in the ones from the Dell. So because the thing is, if you mix different memory speeds, you're going to be limited to what the slower memory is. So we only have 333 MHz memory here. Right. Okay. Patient is subdued now, and we're going to start the operation. So first we're going to take the memory, and we're going to put in the 200, I mean the 1 gigabyte memory. Of course, I made sure that the power is disconnected, because we don't want to do anything to this while it's on. So it's off and unplugged. Okay, this is the 256 memory. I mean, 256 megabytes of memory. Actually, this one is the 400 megahertz. Uh, must be the 512. That's a 333 then. I'm gonna have to get this graphic card out of the way because that's. Let's look at that. That's right where that catches for the memory. Way. So to stick out, it's not going to do much good. Yeah, this is the 330 megahertz one, as you can see. So that would be a I thought the 256 megabyte one was the 330 megahertz one, but it's not. It's that one. I thought the other memory stick was the 333, but uh, it obviously is not. Okay, so we're now going to put in the memory sticks from the Dell, which are both 400 megahertz, 512 megabytes. So this thing should scream along, or at least be a little bit faster anyway. Let's put this one in here because this is the more difficult of the two to put in. Simply because of where it is located. Put 
probably, I think I just punched the camera there. So that one is in. And we're now going to put this one in. So we're going there. Get in there with butter. So at least now it has more RAM, and faster RAM at that as well. So while I was writing that original video that the Dell does have faster RAM than this one, well, that's not going to be the case now. Better put, actually better put that graphic card back in, because we, or else it won't be able to display any graphics. What the hell did I just say there? trying to say it won't be able to display any graphics, but it came out like, um, diff came out completely differently. Well, okay, let's plug this thing back in and see if it works. I was going to see if I could put the CPU from Dell in there. Not sure if it will fit, if it has the same socket or not. But unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea whatsoever as to how to remove this heatsink, so that will just have to stay in. Wouldn't be much of a uh, wouldn't be much of a difference anyway. But let's turn this on, see if it works. See if we get any nasty error codes or anything. It's a very humid day today. So I didn't sweat all over the RAM sticks and short them out. That seems to be booting up. I'll just let this boot up. Well, there you go. The upgrade to the memory was a success. We now have one gigabyte of RAM in this thing. So maybe this time, when I do flash and stuff on this, it will stop complaining about running out of memory. So, feel any better after that RAM upgrade? I feel moody. I feel powerful. I feel invincible. I feel swar 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 Yeah, okay, whatever. Anyway, that's the end of this video, so I'm gonna go and edit that now on this computer, obviously, because this is the computer I use for my video editing. And I'll see ya next time. Goodbye.